There's actually not a lot of resources around how to appropriately handle errors in JavaScript. So I want to talk about five things that you need to consider when you are writing code to handle JavaScript errors. And the first one is really interesting. The first one is whether or not it's your responsibility to actually handle the error. And I know that sounds really weird. So let's start with a basic example here. So I'm going to use Zod, which is a package that is used for uh, validating schemas or validating inputs. And in this case, you can see I define a schema where I say the thing should be a string. And you've got additional functions in here that you can call, but we're keeping it simple with just validating a string. And then I have a function for parse string input, and I intentionally define this in TypeScript to be of type any instead of string so that we can kind of trigger some errors. So the first question is, is it my responsibility inside of this function to actually handle this error? So what might happen is I might do a try catch in here and then add the parse inside of here. And then if there is an error, uh, I would log out this error. Now we'll talk a lot more about uh, how to get better than just uh, this example here for logging out errors. We'll come back to that in a minute. But in this case, we are deciding this first thing. Is it our responsibility to handle this? And so the alternative is if I have a function that calls this. So uh, do some work. I don't know what this is going to be. And inside of here, we want to actually call that parse string input function. So we could pass in a string of hello. And if we didn't handle the error here, because this will throw an error uh, if it's not valid, then we can come down and handle the try catch down here. So basically the decision is in the function that I'm writing, is it my responsibility to handle this error or is it someone else's responsibility to handle the caller to, to handle that error? And that could kind of go either way. There's also interesting thing. It doesn't exist in TypeScript, although I wish it did, would be like a throws annotation. So if you define a function like this in C Sharp or Java, not in TypeScript, you know if you call that function, you have to actually handle that error. In this case, it doesn't exist in TypeScript. It's something I actually really wish did because in this case, we could call a function and not know whether or not it throws an error. So anyway, we have to be intelligent about where, when and where we actually handle it. Do we handle that error ourselves or do we expect the caller to handle that uh, themselves? Now, I think a more interesting thing is, let's get rid of this. Let's add our try catch up here and let us move this part up here. An interesting thing is what do you actually return from the uh, from calling this function? So if I were to call this function with uh, parse string 20, this is going to, I'm using Quokka as the extension here. It shows live results. You can see that this actually does trigger or throw, well, log out. It throws and then catches and then uh, logs out this Zod error. So the interesting thing is like, if I were to call this function, what is it that I uh, return? So I could call, I could set this to result for, for example. And then what do I actually return? So this may seem a little trivial. So I could return the input if it uh, validates successfully. Otherwise I could return a message of some sort failed to parse this thing. I don't know what it is. And then we could log out the result. And if we didn't have that error up there, you can see that we're now returning this error message that says fail, fail to parse this thing. If we then call this with hello, we can see that we get that actually back as well. So this is obviously a little ambiguous here of are we returning data? Are we returning an error message, et cetera? And so that was Alexa. I don't know why. Anyway, uh, so I have this example uh, type inside of TypeScript for a return value. And this is kind of neat, I think, because uh, this is a return value of type T. This is generic, which means you can define what this return value is. And then you can return back either an object that has a data property of type T or an error that is a string. So if we were to reference this inside of this function, we could say this returns a return value of type, and then we could have string inside of here. So now you can see if we return the input, this should actually be an object with a data property of input. And then if we had an error, we would return an error message there. So we'd have an object with that error property. So in this way, what we're able to do is we're able to check, hey, in the result, we can check to see if we have an error. And this is actually really important because then we can not only check to see if there's an error, but also have a specific message associated with it. So we could check this by saying if the error key is in result, we want to log out the result dot error. And notice I'm getting IntelliSense in here for that error, which I think is pretty neat. So uh, we can log out that error or we can log out the result dot data property. And it's actually interesting inside of TypeScript, I can reference the dot data property here, maybe take a second to 
guess if you know why. It's because we've already checked to see if there was an error key inside of that. So if I first checked to see if there is result.error, this is actually gonna throw me uh, an error or like a, a warning here because I don't actually know that that error property exists. So the way I check this is see if that key exists in the object and then reference it. If not, it knows that that data property is there, so it references it here. So this way, again, I'm able to define what type of data I wanna return and then also have an error message associated with this specifically if something happens. Now, the next thing is, how do we get error messages that are meaningful to the actual user? And let's go back to an example where we trigger this error and we log this out. So let's go and pass in 10 in this case, and this should log out this big long error. Now for, you can see this is of type Zod error. We'll come back to that in a second. But this has a list of issues and then an array of issues. And then each one has these different properties, including a message property. So we could come in and actually return that error message. So if we look inside of here, we could return error.issues of the first item and then dot message. And then now, if instead of logging this up here, the whole error, we just log that message, you can see that we are actually logging this message coming from Zod. Now, the interesting thing about this is it's now your responsibility to figure out, is this an error message that makes sense for the user? And where am I actually returning this error to? So if this is uh, data that then gets shown in like a flash message at the top of your application or something, you probably wanna make sure this is more user friendly. Now, obviously this validation doesn't make as much sense because we have inputs where you can define the type of text or number, et cetera. But you just wanna make sure that you think through what is the actual message that you're returning to make sure it's something that's readable for the actual user themselves. Now, for the next point, I actually moved everything to an actual TypeScript file because I was having some issues with the Zod package inside of Quokka. Uh, but now that I've done this in a full TypeScript file, you can see that I've got uh, an issue here where error is of type unknown and then you can't just start accessing properties of error when you don't know what it is. So what we can do inside of here, and this is especially useful if you can have different types of errors, is you can check to see if the error is an instance of, and then uh, this is actually one word, so instance of, and then in this case, I'm gonna check to see if it's an instance of Zod error. And then if that is the case, this problem should go away because now it knows the types for this. So inside of here, we could see uh, error dot, and then we get IntelliSense for issues, and then we can look at the first one and then get IntelliSense for message as well. Now, this is really helpful because now we can start to reference specific messages in here based on the type of error. So if we, if it wasn't a uh, Zod error, we may do something more generic to say, hey, an error occurred. And this is when we get to the point of like, hey, I don't actually know, maybe we haven't handled some specific use case that we didn't know about. So now we have at least a generic message that we can give back to the user to let them know but this also is something that we should probably track this error to work on later. We should work on tracking this so that we can actually get detailed messages for any specific scenario that comes up. Not to say that you need to give away like inner workings of how your code works behind the scenes, but you do wanna have something valuable for the user as they go through. Now, in terms of tracking your errors, I think the best way to do this is with Sentry. In full transparency, Sentry is a partner of mine that I've been working with but it's absolutely fantastic. So if I just look inside of my dashboard really quickly for our deals for devs application, you can see a list of all of my errors and then it actually shows you uh, in the source maps and the code where that error was occurring and it gives you all sorts of details about a replay, which is pretty sick and uh, call or breadcrumbs in this case, it gives you call traces. They also are working on a, an auto fix AI feature, which is pretty neat. I'll have a video on this coming soon where they will actually recognize your error then create a PR for that error in your code base, which is pretty sick. So anyway, I think this is one of the best ways that you have to track those kind of errors as they go through. You can organize them, you can go and see all the details and then actually tie them to PRs either that they generate or that you may generate. So make sure to check out Sentry at Sentry.io. Now, one interesting additional aspect of this is let's say you have multiple things that could throw an error. So we have a uh, function, so we have a function function that throws and I'll let uh, GitHub Copilot do this for me. So, hey, there's a function that throws. And then if we were to call this inside of here, we have multiple different types of error messages that we might could get. Now, this is just a generic message. So that will be processed down here. 
But there is a little bit of thought of, do we separate these into their own separate try catches? So what we could do is we could add a try catch for this and then have a response back uh, like this and then have a separate one where uh, we handle or we try to do the parse and then handle that down here. And then we could potentially get rid of, it's probably safer to have this check, but we could potentially get rid of this. So kind of your options are to either have multiple try catches for these or to put them uh, where you're checking the specific type of error in one place in the catch. I actually think this is a better pattern because you can add all your stuff that you want kind of in line and there's less kind of boilerplate code to handle multiple catches. And then you can have that generic like, hey, if we don't get a specific type, we can go and handle with this generic message as well. So I think this would be my preferred route instead of having multiple try catches, do multiple if else conditions based on the error type inside of your catch. Now, the last thing to consider is this may get kind of repetitive in different places as well. So one of the things that you could do is you could define a with error handling a higher order function. And basically what this is, higher order function is going to accept a function as a parameter. And I don't know, um, I guess I have to define this in some way. Um, I don't know if that will limit us in terms of parameters, but anyway, we have, uh, we have a, a function that we take in. And then what we do is we return another function that then calls that function inside of a try catch and then handles the errors. So you could go through and have all of your functions that you may call. So if you were to call uh, with string input and this didn't do any error handling. So we did something like this, just like this. All right, so we could minimize this function. And then when we call this, we wanna have the ability to call it and actually handle those errors. So we could come down and move this code below our new utility function. And we could wrap this function with with error handling. And so that will return this new function that we can then call and then pass in the parameter that goes to this one. Now, I think I'm going to have some TypeScript issues because I don't specifically know how to define this as a generic function without parameter types. I'm not sure how to do that right offhand. But this allows us to have uh, with error handling where we can keep all of the functions pretty simple so we don't have to worry about error handling and then wrap all of these with this uh, higher order function that allows us to uh, return the function and wrap that with the try catch. Now inside of here, we could also have all of our checks for uh, error instance of z dot uh, zod error. And then we could go back and return uh, or log out, let's see, our error dot issues zero message and this should be one word in here so i think that will work now so in this case we have like one try catch we could have a bunch of different if conditions based on these different errors that we might have now you may notice one thing that i have in here is i defined my own special error and this is the last thing that you might think about is is it worth it for you and this could be a string uh, is it worth it for you at times to define your own special error type and this special error type might add additional properties like error code. And this is some code that you make up. So you could define if you need to your own special error. And this could be like my special error with code or whatever you want it to be to, the, to add additional properties to the error object. And then again, you'll need to handle those in your try catches. So anyway, there's lots to think about in handling errors that I think just really doesn't get covered. The first thing is, is it your responsibility? The second thing is, what are you returning from this? The third thing is, what type of specific message are you returning based on who the caller is? It's different if you're returning an error message to something on the back end that's logging out or it's gonna be read in logs versus something that's actually gonna be read by a user. Then it's how do you handle specific different types of errors? And then is it worth creating a higher order function or something where you can wrap functions and then handle the try catch there so you're not having to repeat try catch all over the place. Anyway, lots of things to think about. I'd be curious, what are your different preferences for the options that we've shown in this video? Let me know in the comments below what your preferences are. Hope this helps, gives you a better idea of things to think about when handling errors in JavaScript. In the meantime, I hope you enjoyed the video and I'll catch you next time.